I saw the pieces. I saw we had guys, and and we practiced hard. We had guys that went out and competed, but we we never could. We didn't know how to win. We didn't know how to win. My first year with him is we lost all our games. It was bad. And I was questioning myself, like, why did I come here, you know, type stuff. But, I, hey, and when Simmons got fired and Miles came in, Miles came in with a whole different direction. Guys started getting on the board and physical practices start getting tougher and tougher. And he, Because he ran a tough practice and it started building their mindset, hey, we got to finish, we got to finish, got to compete. Everything was competition. When was the last time you were back here in Stillwater? The last time would have been, oh, you know what? This past summer, uh, well, early in June, or uh, my son had a football camp. We went to the football camp, and uh, it was pretty. That was pretty exciting. What was that, it like being back here with your son at a football camp at the university where you played? Man, it was a good time. It was a good time because I've always wanted him to come here, of course, and, well, you know, show interest. And now by him going to the camp, it, it really opened his eyes. He was like, man, y'all got nice facilities. He didn't, he, he is never, you know, he, we always, always talk about it with him, but that was his first time on the campus. So he was super excited. It was just a good time just seeing the coaches. And then we got to, you know, go around, see the new facilities, man. It was, man, he, he thought he was, you know, he thought he was doing something. So it, it, it was a good time. How old is your son? He's 15. So he is just sort of getting started with the whole high school football recruiting scene to an extent. Yes, he's just now getting started. He's a sophomore and he's just now getting getting started with everything and trying to get his name on the map. That's why I was going to the camp, trying to, you know, get on the radar. And just, you know, we had a, you know, he was a freshman last year. He played varsity. He didn't really get too many plays, but now it's, it should be our breakout season and go from there. What position is he? He plays receiver. So you were saying that he was here, seeing the facilities for the first time. It's been about 20 years since you were here. So you're also sort of seeing the facilities. Yes. Well, I've, I've been back, you know, with my graduation and I came, I went to a few games. I moved back from Colorado in 2020. And ever since 2020, I've been to the spring, you know, the spring game, uh, been back to a few games every year. So I'm trying to stay active with it. But uh, the facilities are top notch. And you know, last time I, you know, when I came for the graduation, the locker room wasn't finished. So lock up, we got to see the locker room finished, and you know that was that was nice, man. Locker room, man. We, our facilities top of the line. So that was that was pretty exciting. You keep talking about graduation. When did you officially walk across that stage here at OSU? Uh, December last year, and uh, that was pretty exciting because, like I said, I have a seventeen-year-old and she wants to go to Oklahoma State. So I just. It was just time for me to just quit playing and just finish my degree and just go ahead and do it before the kids pass me. Why was it important to you to come back and finish that degree? I didn't want to be the only person in the house without a degree. <laughs> so, uh, you know, my wife, my, uh, you know, I, like what I say with the kids, you know, when, them, when they get to college, I just didn't want them to pass me. So I just had to just show them, you know, if you start something, you got to go back and finish it. How hard was it for you to get motivated to come back and finish up those last few courses? It was, it was, it was actually kind of fun because I was in, I was online with a lot of classes. People, you know, some of the professors kind of recognized my name, and we had side conversations. It was pretty cool. And uh, but none of the, uh, but but seeing some of the the debates and the group chats in some of the classes, and I mean, I was in class with a few athletes. It was just, it just brought back all memories, but it was it was cool because I was more into it. I you know I, I'm worldly now, so I know what's going on. So it was just it was good. It was good. Let's talk a little bit about your career here at Oklahoma State. How did you end up deciding to commit to the Cowboys? Well, I had narrowed it down. We was uh. Out of all the visits, I had did the senior. Okay, heading to my senior year, me, my family, we did an unofficial visit to all of a lot of schools. Pretty much my top five: OU, OSU, uh, CU. Uh, we went to K State, we went to Arkansas. So out of all those schools, they knew I was coming. OSU was the only one that didn't know on the unofficial visit, and all the coaches were out of town. I think it was this was Coach Simmons back then, and Rex Ryan. But, but one of the Ryan brothers, I can't think exactly which one it was. He was he was there on campus and he showed me around, got to meet the pr the president at the time. It was just a good time for them not knowing that I was coming. And I really felt that that home atmosphere being in Stillwater compared to the other cities, 
and it's a four hour drive from home. It was, I just felt at home, I was most comfortable. And then when I finally took my official visit, it just reassured me that this is where I wanted to be. And you know, I, Texas was recruiting me and a and but why go to Texas and compete with 10 running backs when I can go to Oklahoma State and compete with one or two? So that's how I looked at it. I was look, trying to get on the field. I wasn't really trying to, you know, wait too long. How do you think that worked out for you, just competing with one or two running backs? It worked out well. I mean, I, I, I've always competed my whole life, so competition wasn't a thing. But, you know, it worked out how the coaches said it would. You know, hey, if you come in and compete, you got a chance to play your freshman year. And, and you know, when the older guys in front of you leave, you have pretty much three years to compete for the starting job. And that's how it played out. And nothing was promised. You just got to go out there and take it. Straight ahead, big hole. Look out. It's Bell. He's loose. First down. Football. 40. You're the only cowboy to have two of the top 10 longest rushes in program history. Did you know that? I didn't. I didn't. I knew I knew about the 95 yarder. What, what's the second one? The 88 yarder, I believe it was. Uh, Southern Miss, I believe. Begins in their own two yard line. Bell, a gaping hole over the right side, breaks into the open, and it's a foot race. Bell, with big time speed, is finally run down. and Leroy Johnson bring him down but not after he goes 88 yards on a carry first and 10 from their own two yard line. Do you guys remember Tony? How was your first bowl game experience? What was it like playing in a college football bowl? That was that was exciting. That was the, the turn of the program. We we was kind of headed in the right direction. It was a it was the a first year bowl and we we didn't care. It was our first bowl. We we didn't care anyway. What bowl we would have went to, but it was a good time. It was in Houston, so you know, I had a lot of family that could make it and lot, all of the fam all of our fan base made it. It was it was just a real good outing. And then we beat Southern Miss because they had kind of been a, a thorn in our side the previous year. So it was just a good time. Oklahoma State has made a bowl. I believe it's been 18 of the last or 17 of the last 18 seasons. Gundy's entering his 19th season. What do you think the standard is now at Oklahoma State as you're able to reflect back on the two decades since you've left? Bowl game is 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 definitely that's the floor. That's the floor. Six wins is the floor for us. Nowadays, you know, we like Coach Gundy said, we have a brand like bowl game, uh, the Houston Bowl, those kind of bowls, those like the floor for us. Our, our ceiling is so much higher now. And I I, I I say the standard for us, at least eight eight to ten wins a, a year. What was your favorite memory from playing in Stillwater? Ooh, man, I have so many. Uh, probably being around the fellas, the fellas, the locker room memories, those a lot of memories I always cherish. And then even when I played with the Broncos, the same thing, like the locker room time and the stories and just being around the guys, that was pretty much the, you know, what made it. Because, you, you know, you grind with those guys every day and you're around them all the time. So it's just, they pretty, they pretty much turn into your family and your brother. So that was a good time, of course, you know, going to the bowl games, the you know, the Houston, the Alamo Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, beating, you know, uh, Nebraska, K-State, beating, uh, you know, OU twice in a row. That, so I got a lot of memories, but I can just go on and on. But being how, around the fellas would be my, my top my top choice. How often do you get to see some of those guys that you played with? Uh, Not too often. Not too often. We on the group chat with all the guys that I played with. And uh, we keep up with each other, kids and families that way. But uh, when when we go to games, we always kind of go to games separately. So, you know, I never – it's hit or miss when I'm going to run into those guys. But, you know, I let them know if I'm going or they'll let me know. But we we're, we everybody has kids and family, so it's kind of hard to put it all together. Last time we all got together was the uh, homecoming they brought us to – not last year. Was it last year or the year before? They had the reunion from the Houston Bowl. And I, 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 you know, reunited with all the fellas. That was a good time. The reunion was last year. I am, I am being told by our producer it was 2022. So, but still, I mean, okay. once a year when these are the guys that you have so many memories with, that's yeah. not that's not a lot of t frequent. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we you know we need to get. We always say we're gonna get down there more and try to get there more often, but it's, it, you know it's always tough. So, 
What was your favorite place to play away games? Oh, all of pretty much Texas, because you know all my family was in Texas, so uh, I love playing in Texas and them. I love their field, the fans, uh, the atmosphere was rowdy. It was always loud. Uh, Texas was was the same way. It was loud. It's big old stadium and everybody. It was always hot. Those be my favorite place. Uh, the least favorite play. I hated Texas Tech. I hated playing in uh, where where uh, what was that? K State. I didn't like playing in K State. They suck. I only played there once, but they beat us pretty bad too. But it sucked playing there. But Texas Tech. I hated playing there. Those fans. They used to throw stuff at us, so they used to tell us don't engage with the fans because, yeah, it was it was intense. What did you do after your career at Oklahoma State ended? I got drafted by the Broncos, second round. I played, for the, I played in the NFL five years, and after my time was done, I continued to live in Denver for, you know, I lived there a total of 16 years and uh, kind of started a couple of businesses and, and been investing and got some, you know, things going. And so that's, that's pretty much been my timeline. And uh, been back, I moved back from Colorado in 2020, back to Dallas. So uh, been back in Dallas. I'm so happy to be here because my, my older two kids got to, you know, come up in Texas. I used to always tell them I wanted them to come up in Texas instead of Colorado. Well, you know, sports wise. And that, that was, that was, that's pretty much been my timeline. What was your experience the time in the, in the NFL? NFL was was awesome. First down, it's Bell. He's got big running lanes to the 50 with one man to beat. Bell taking off. Look at the speed, the explosion, and just like that. That was awesome. That was awesome. I played uh, four years with the Broncos, one year with the Detroit Lions. Uh, the years with the Broncos were great. Year with the, my one year with the uh, the Detroit Lions, we sucked. Uh, but yeah, I. Man, football, that was the best time of my life, uh, you know, besides college, uh, playing in the NFL. Because it was a childhood dream of mine and kind of set me up for my life I live now and, you know, my family. And it was good. You know, you just got to be privileged, you know. I was privileged enough, privileged enough to play and blessed enough to play. And it was it was honor. It was fun. Your son has the advantage of having a father who has played at the highest level, who's played at the Division One level. How often does he ask you your advice on how he can follow in your footsteps? Hardly ever. He's hard headed. I try to tell him he knows everything and he thinks that because he's like athletic, he can, you know, I'm get, trying to tell him he's finally getting to that point now where all the other guys are just as fast as him. And well, you know, he, he's meeting his match pretty much. So now it's, like man, like man, dad, these guys big and fast. I'm like, man, I've been trying to tell you this your whole life. Everything I've been trying to tell him, it's all coming. You know, he's all starting to realize it now. But we talk. I always drop nuggets and you know jewels to him every day and all the time. And my oldest daughter, so they know how I feel. You know, especially with sports and and you know we're a super competitive family. But in life too, and you know just just you know just trying to groom them to be better citizens. That's all. Your daughter's a track star, correct? Yes. And does she want to run in college? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, she's she's a uh, senior. We we're we're getting some looks and offers now. Well, not offers, but we're getting some letters, and we, we we just waiting for somebody to just come on and say, hey, come on. And but she would love to come to Oklahoma State, of course. But uh, we'll just have to see. We just got to keep grinding and wait till that first offer and let some more come in. What would it mean to you though if she did end up at Oklahoma State? Oh my goodness! What if she went to Old State? Both of them, but now nah, if she did, cause she she really wants to go there, cause she's been down to a couple of games with me, and I said, hey, you know, if you just go to Old State, you might have to walk on. You know, if they don't offer you, she like she didn't even care. She had to walk on for track. She just she really wants to go there. She she walks around with OSU hoodie on every day, so uh, she bleeds orange already. So that's good. And I'm trying to get my knucklehead son to get on board, but. Yeah. After you, you know, had some businesses, you got into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Were you also a coach? Yes, yes, I coached. I coached twelve years, and uh, that was fun. I just, I, well, I just stopped coaching when my son got to high school because I wanted to kind of keep up, but I didn't want to miss any of his games and stuff like that. Being a coach, I wouldn't be able to 
do all of that. But the coaching was awesome. I coached with uh, when I was in Colorado. I coached with uh, some former Cowboys, uh, Gabe Lindsay, Tony Lindsay. They play, they were older than me, but I played with them. And uh, so that was cool. I coached with them and their dad. That was that was that was my most. That was fun. That was fun. Then when I moved back to Dallas, I coached two years. And then, when my, like I said, when my son got to high school, I stopped. So, but coaching was fun, man. I, it was it was my kind of my way of still playing football, you know, without playing and living through the kids and, and still giving back. And it was it was a good time. I I actually miss it. And my wife like you need to get back into it because she taught me, you know, talking and coaching the TV and the TV and and my son games from the stand. So she she was telling me I need to get back into it. So. I was about to ask, how hard is it just to sit and watch a game and not, not be like, you need to be doing this. I, well, I, we, I, it is, it is. I'm up there screaming from the stands, and and then when we watch the huddle, the film on the huddle, that's what their film is. So once the game is over, they get to watch this. It all put on this this format called huddle. So we, me and the son, watch the huddle, watch his game film, and we kind of go by every play. And so that's that's that's, and I, I look forward to doing it. Does he look forward to doing that? <laughs> Yeah, actually he does. Now, last year, not so much. But now, he's like, okay, we start doing it in the spring again after his spring practices. And he, he liked it and it kind of helped him. Because, you know, in high school, they hardly ever all watch it together with the coaching staff. So, it was a good time. Now, I can kind of give him my insight, like tell him little keys and stuff to look for that the coach is not, you know, emphasizing that, hey, this can add, add the value to your game. And he finally starting to listen, finally. Bringing it back to Oklahoma State, Mike Gundy has been very honest about wanting to increase the run game this season. You're a former running back. If you heard that and you were on the team, how would you react to Coach Gundy saying, we want you to be more productive? Hey, you got to you gotta <laughs> barbecue or mildew. That's that's the old saying we used to say back in the day. Uh, if you don't do it, the next man will. So you better get in there and get it. My, my thought process, I've always been a competitor. And out from high school through college, like, hey, make them make them keep you in the game. Make them do do something to make them keep you in the game. And so the running backs, if you're not producing, hey, we're gonna get a guy that will. And and best believe we we have a history of running backs. But I definitely I'm excited by by Gundy saying that. And that was that was a weakness last year. We had two freshmen and the line was banged up. And now all the line is back. We ha we have more depth with the line. The running backs more seasoned. They, They'll have a, definitely a better year. And I've been following the, those two guys since they was in, in high school, Nixon and Gordon, because I keep up with all of, you know, the preps, you know, high school stuff. So I've been I've been following those guys and Rangel, the quarterback. Uh, I live in Frisco, so I live I, I live right, you know, right next to Rangel and Nixon school. So I've definitely been a fan of those guys before they even got there. But I, I'm excited about the run game. I'm excited about, you know, being more physical, that's what we need to do. Establishing the line of scrimmage and, and you know, trying to dominate and win games late in, well, late in the season. The offensive line has said this is the deepest it's been in years. Again, you're a running back. You know how important the offensive line is to a team and to your position specifically. How important is it that they are healthy this season? How What difference can that make in an offense? You know, if you win the trenches, you have a good chance of winning the game. And last year, we wasn't winning in the trenches. Uh, Offensive-wise, you know, we, we struggled. You know, guys, are, you know, were hurt. So we always having different lineups in the in the lineup. Guys not getting used to each other. And, their, 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 you know, their words, their, their cold words at the line of scrimmage. And you have to be on the same page. But I'm just I'm just excited. I'm ready I can't wait to Saturday. Man, I'm excited. Will you be up here for any games this season? Oh, no doubt. Uh, I don't know exactly what games, but uh, I'm, I, I'll be definitely making a few. I've read that you bleed orange. You are all about the brand. We have a logo, too. You are OSU through and through. We released new oh. uniforms this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I got to ask you about that since you are very big on uniform combinations. You've made comments in previous interviews. Yeah. What do you think about the new unis? I absolutely love them. It's a mix with old with the new and you know and I, I was already loving our uniform combination anyway i felt like we was right behind oregon that's the only other school that really could outdo us in uniforms and we're we're really right there neck and neck with them but the new ones man i'm it's sweet man i can't wait i had to i had to uh try to rub elbows with somebody to get me a custom one made but i don't know who but yeah <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite combo of uniform I like the uh, man. I like all of them. I like uh, the all black 
I like the uh the all orange, of course. I like the all white. Only ones I really wasn't a fan of was the all gray. Let's just say that. Really? I like the grays. I see I wasn't big on the gray, but I was big on every other one. Like the, the different helmets, of course, with the different, you know, decals on them. Everything but the gray to me was was in. Yeah. What's your favorite helmet decal? I like the Curse of Cowboys. I like, and then the badge is cool, but I like, I think the Curse of Cowboys is is my, is the one right now for me. I like that one too. So you like, you like all of the uniforms and for the yeah. first time in a long time, we have two away jerseys, two whites with the black, ar- the black numbers and then the ones with the orange numbers. So we have different combos for yeah. away games as well. But if you, if you get that hookup and you get that custom jersey, <laughs> which one are you asking for? Ooh, I'm gonna have to do the all, the all orange. It's oh, a good one. I'm gonna have to do the all orange, yeah, cause yeah, that does look good hanging on the wall. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do the all orange. So you just hang it on the wall, you wouldn't even wear it. Oh no, I'm just it just definitely going the wall. That's all. Yeah, I'll just give me a shirt worth to the game. I just that jersey have to hang on the wall. I think they are selling custom jerseys, the shirt jerseys now. I've seen it. I've seen it, but I need a I need one with bell on the back. You know what I mean? <laughs> T bell on the back. How many how many jerseys do you think are hanging in your house? Well, I have them. I I don't have them hung up, but uh, I'll say about ten to twelve. And they're all yours. Oh no 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 not mine. There are uh, other teammates of mine that I play with. The only jersey I have of mine would be the Bronco jersey, and uh, I only have two jerseys of mine. Just hang Who are there. some of the other ones you have? Uh, Champ Bailey, Rod Smith, uh, Terrell Davis, uh, some Bronco players, uh, Calvin Johnson from the Detroit Lions. Got some Hall of uh, Famers there. Uh, hell yeah, Champ Bailey, man. That's man. That's man. That was that was crazy playing with him. I but can't yeah. even imagine. I'm a big Champ Bailey fan. So so nice. talented. And who doesn't nice. love Megatron either? You know. Man, exactly, man. That was man. I was part of the people that named him because I wanted to name him Optimus Prime. They the uh, the the guys were like, nah, he too his attitude nasty for Optimus. he was too he was too mean for Optimus. So we we end up naming him Megatron. And I was I was part of the, that group that named him. Okay. <laughs> Calvin Johnson was mean. Well, no, he wasn't mean, but when you see him and, and his his the way he played, you was like, ah, he's not he's not a nice guy. He's he's out there dominating everybody, and he dominated the sprints. He dominated drills. As soon as we drafted him, we was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, he's for real. He was he was official. You talked about some of your favorite memories being with just hanging with the guys in the locker room. Is there anything specific that you can remember about some of your teammates that you were closest with? I was close with a lot of guys, but um, the biggest thing was um, what really kind of turned my eyes of one to really like, okay, I can really make it to the NFL was when uh, my junior year when uh, Kevin Williams got drafted. Let's call him K-Dub. You know, he went, what, seven to eighth overall, and then he came back to campus in his Cadillac. And, you know, we all driving four focuses and stuff like that. So, you know, that was the real – I open it. We're like, man, K Dub. I just played with him. He went eighth overall. Man, if I just really, really put my grind down and just put my nose down to get it, I can, you know, be driving Escalade too. You also mentioned getting to that first bowl game. What was it like to be part of the team that really sort of sparked the turnaround of Oklahoma State football? Man, uh, well, it, it kind of started like. I saw the pieces. I saw we had guys, and and we practiced hard. We had guys that went out and competed, but we we never could. We didn't know how to win. We didn't know how to win. My first year with him is we lost all our games. It was bad, and I was questioning myself like, why did I come here? You know, type stuff. But I hey, and when Simmons got fired and Miles came in, Miles came in with a whole different direction. It was a culture shock for a lot of guys. And me coming from you know Desoto High School, you know we're a powerhouse down here, so I. I had the tough coaches, the tough love, so it was it was it wasn't it wasn't really you know eye, eye opener for me. But some of the guys, you know, you know it was it was it was rough for them. And then you had to get get with it, you know, either get with it or get get lost. So 
guys start getting on the board and physical practices start getting tougher and tougher and he because he ran a tough practice and it started building their mindset hey we gotta finish we gotta finish we gotta compete everything was competition and you know we didn't have that that culture under under simmons and then with miles he just brought the whole culture and whole different vibe what was it like playing under Les miles miles was cool miles was cool he was you know no nonsense guy uh Gundy was my offense coordinator. He was a no-nonsense guy. So when you, you know, both of those guys staring the offense, it, the offense was, that's why the offense was so successful. Cause you know, if you didn't do your job, they was going to have a guy in here that was doing her, that was going to replace you. And that was our mindset. That was the team's mindset. Hey, if you can't get it done, we'll get somebody else to get it done. And guys start getting, you know, the dogs start coming out of everybody on the team. Gundy was your OC. He's now entering his 19th season mm -hmm. as a head coach. What do you think that he means to Cowboy football? Man, he's he's like a rock star. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like uh he's like the man. You know, he's like the face of the of the school pretty much. Uh but well, of course, you know, Barry Sanders, but you know, Gundy, man, he played with Barry and he was he lived them same times and and he's been around the program forever, so it's He's really like the face of the franchise, but uh, he, he's pretty much a rock star. <laughs> You've mentioned Barry Sanders, one of the most talented running backs to ever come through this program. Thurman Thomas, just to name another one. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel like you rank in this list of legendary running backs at Oklahoma State? <sighs> Man, that's a tough one. Uh, well, of course, Barry and Thurman one and two. Ooh, then I got to go Chuba at three because Chuba, you know, 2,000 yards. He did stuff, you know, we were dreamed of doing. Oh, man, I like Kendall Hunter as well. And then I had to put myself, man, I I had to put myself at five. I'll be honest with you. I feel like, you know, like I say, Barry and Thurman wanted two. Chuba's three. Kendall Hunter had to be four. Uh. I feel like I got Justice Hill. I got some of them other guys. But, uh, yeah, especially if I played in that offense they played in. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, yeah, those that would be my five. But I say I'm, I'll be five out of the – I'll be five out of that list, no doubt. What about Terry Miller and Bob Fenimore? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I got them too. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty, though. <laughs> I think I got them too. Now, no doubt, no Terry, a ring of famer. You know what I mean? I know. I know. But, yeah, I think I got Terry. <laughs> What's it like, though, being part of this fraternity of running backs that Oklahoma State has produced? It's, man, we we one of the top schools with, you know, with with some nice backs. So, I uh, no doubt, I definitely uh, say – Man, we definitely got to be a top five running back you school for us producing running backs. If you come to OSU it's, and you produce, you have a good chance of going to the NFL. So I know that's what guys look at when they when they make decisions. So we definitely one of the top schools. Running backs, receivers, offensively wise, you know, if you come to OSU, we can we can we can groom you and get you to the NFL.